Episode 2 of Loki reveals a lot about the TVA, the Timekeepers, and the Sacred Timeline, but still leaves some big unanswered questions along the way. Hey there and welcome to Screen Rant, I'm Greg Elliott, and be warned there are spoilers ahead. At the end of Episode 2, we finally meet the Loki variant responsible for all the timeline tomfoolery, and oh, it's a lady. <laughs> Lady Loki bombs the sacred timeline and in doing so leaves us with some things we can't wait to get cleared up. So let's dive right into the biggest questions episode 2 of Loki asks about the sacred timeline. What is this about? This isn't about you. Right. So the first one we've got is, where exactly did Lady Loki come from? Earlier in the episode, Mobius mentions that they regularly encounter Loki variants of all different shapes and sizes. But if the TVA does such a good job of keeping the sacred timeline intact, why is this one only now being discovered and confronted? And on top of that, how many other Loki variants are actually out there, and will we actually get to meet any of them in the show? Now, it's possible that because the sacred timeline loops forever, it does allow for minor variations, including a female Loki. Now, what level of variance demands intervention isn't entirely clear yet, and this doesn't really explain how Lady Loki became aware of the TVA, or why she's straying so far from her set role in the sacred timeline. So our next question is, what exactly is Lady Loki's plan? The reset charges she set off are meant to erase divergent branches from the sacred timeline, but she appears to be erasing moments on the sacred timeline itself. So why do that and why kidnap a Minuteman to find out where the timekeepers are? The simplest explanation is she just wants to resurrect the original multiverse as an act of chaos, but we're guessing that her motivations are going to be a bit more complex than that. And how are the old timekeepers? How do you think? I don't know, because I've never met them. And about those timekeepers, what do they actually want? Yeah, we're told that they just want to maintain order and whatnot, but there's a lot about them that doesn't add up either. If the timekeepers can create the entirety of the TVA and keep countless realities in check, isn't it a little odd that they can't work out the end of the timeline yet? Or that outside of Ravona Renslayer, almost no one at the TVA has ever even seen them? And speaking of Renslayer, she seems to be hiding something too. So what does she know? She says she's been in recent contact with the Timekeepers, but is that the whole story, or even true? In the comics, Renslayer is the love interest of the time-traveling villain Kang the Conqueror, who will soon be introduced in the MCU via Ant-Man 3, if not sooner. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Ravona will become a villain too, but given how little we know about the Timekeepers, it's definitely possible that she knows more than she's letting on. What happens when a Nexus event branches past Redline? It's when the TVA can no longer reset a Nexus event. Right, and that would lead to the destruction of the timeline and the collapse of reality as we know it. Okay, so that definitely sounds bad, right? But the collapse of reality is kind of vague, so what does that actually mean? A multiverse apparently existed before the intervention of the Timekeepers, which means it could be sustainable again, right? Now, the previous multiverse setup allegedly led to a massive war between the timelines, but the Timekeepers could be lying about that, and even if they're not, there's no way to prove that the same thing would happen again if the multiverse were restored. But let's just say that the Sacred Timeline doesn't get destroyed, but ends however it's supposed to. Well, then what happens at the end? The Timekeepers apparently don't even know, so how far into the future does the timeline even go, and what happens when it hits the point that hasn't yet been decided? As with most time travel stories, these questions just lead to more questions, and as Loki found out, most of the answers, well... Does it classify? We'd like to know just as much as you, and we've got tons of great write-ups on ScreenRant.com, so keep coming back to us each week for more questions, and maybe some answers sooner or later, on Loki and the rest of the MCU. I'm Greg Elliott, thank you for watching, and we will hopefully see you in the future.